in our journey as believers, one thing is certain. We have an adversary. Satan, the enemy of our souls, constantly works to oppose God's will in our lives. He is a deceiver, the father of lies, and a master at manipulating our desires. His tactics are subtle, often encouraging us to seek immediate gratification, to avoid discomfort, and to abandon the cross that Christ has called us to bear. But Jesus shows us a different path, a path that leads through suffering, sacrifice, and self-denial, but ultimately to eternal glory. In Matthew 16 verse 21 to 28, we see a powerful moment where Satan tries to derail God's plan through the very voice of one of Jesus' disciples, Peter. Yet, Jesus responds decisively, Get behind me, Satan. This passage teaches us crucial lessons about recognizing and resisting the enemy's voice and following Christ no matter the cost. In Matthew 16 verse 21, Jesus begins to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things, be killed, and be raised again on the third day. This was the mission for which he came into the world, to die for the sins of humanity and to rise again in victory over death. But Peter, who just a few verses earlier had proclaimed Jesus as the Messiah, took him aside and rebuked him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Matthew 16 verse 22 Peter's response was not malicious. He didn't want to see his Lord suffer. Yet, in that moment, Satan was speaking through Peter, tempting Jesus to avoid the cross. This is how Satan works. He twists our natural desires, like the desire to avoid pain or discomfort, and uses them to lead us away from God's will. Jesus immediately recognized this as a tactic of the enemy and rebuked Satan, saying, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Matthew 16, verse 23. Jesus knew that Peter's words, though well-intentioned, were influenced by Satan's agenda to stop him from fulfilling his purpose. How often does Satan try to use our own desires to derail us from God's will? He encourages shortcuts, ways to avoid the struggle or the sacrifice required to follow Christ. He whispers lies like, you don't need to go through this or God wouldn't want you to suffer. But we must be vigilant to discern the voice of the enemy and like Jesus, rebuke it. After rebuking Peter, Jesus turns to his disciples and makes a profound statement. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Matthew 16 verse 24 The cross is central to following Christ. It represents not just the physical suffering Jesus endured, but also the call for us to die to ourselves, our desires, our plans, and our comforts in order to live for God's will. Satan wants to convince us that the cross is unnecessary, that there is an easier way to follow Christ. But Jesus makes it clear, the way of the cross is the only way. To follow him means to deny ourselves, to embrace the suffering and sacrifice that comes with obedience, and to trust that God's plan is better than anything we could imagine. What does it mean for us to take up our cross? It means being willing to endure hardship, rejection, or loss for the sake of Christ. It means choosing to follow Him even when it is uncomfortable or inconvenient. It means living with eternity in view, not just for the momentary pleasures or rewards of this world. Are we willing to carry our cross or are we seeking a path of comfort that avoids sacrifice? Jesus goes on to say, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, 
but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew 16 verse 25. This statement challenges the very core of our human nature. We naturally want to preserve our lives, our comforts, and our desires. But Jesus tells us that those who live only for themselves, who seek to save their lives by avoiding the cross, will ultimately lose what they are trying to hold on to. In contrast, those who are willing to lose their lives for Christ's sake, those who are willing to lay down their desires, ambitions, and even their very lives for the sake of the gospel, will find true life both now and in eternity. Jesus then poses a sobering question. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Matthew 16 verse 26 The world offers many things, fame, wealth, pleasure, and success. But none of these can compare to the value of our souls. Satan will promise the world, but in exchange, he asks for the one thing that truly matters, our soul. Are we living with eternity in mind or are we focused on the here and now? Are we willing to sacrifice temporary pleasures for the sake of eternal life or are we trading our souls for things that will ultimately pass away? Let's examine our hearts and ask ourselves, what are we exchanging for our soul? Finally, Jesus reminds his disciples that there is a day of reckoning. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and he will reward each according to his works. Matthew 16 verse 27 Jesus points us to the future, reminding us that our lives are not just about the here and now. There will be a day when we stand before him and give an account for how we lived. For those who have taken up their cross and followed him, there is a reward, eternal life in his kingdom. But that reward is only for those who have lived with eternity in view, who have resisted the enemy's lies, and who have embraced the way of the cross. Brothers and sisters, the call to follow Christ is not a call to comfort or convenience. It is a call to take up our cross, to deny ourselves, and to resist the enemy's lies. Satan will try to convince us that there is an easier way, that we can have it all without the sacrifice. But Jesus shows us that the way to true life is through the cross. Let us be mindful of the things of God, not the things of men. Let us live with eternity in view, knowing that the struggles and sacrifices of this life are temporary, but the glory that awaits us is eternal. Let us resist the enemy, standing firm in our faith, knowing that God is with us and will reward us for our faithfulness. Are we ready to take up our cross and follow Christ? Are we ready to resist the enemy and live for eternity? May God give us the strength to endure and the faith to follow him wherever he lives. Amen.